Hi there. Here are five questions covering monetary policy and inflation. So here's a chance to really test yourself on monetary policy issues in terms of MCQ revision. Here's question one. Country Central Bank is charged by the government with increasing, sorry, setting interest rates with a view to meeting a given inflation target. What will increase the likelihood that the central bank will have to raise interest rates? Here's your moment. Press the pause button. Have a go at the question. I'll be back in a few seconds with the right answer. And the correct answer to question one is B, a decrease in the savings ratio. Here's the correct reasoning. A fall in the savings ratio leads to a higher level of consumption for a given level of disposable income. And if people are consuming more, that's going to add to aggregate demand, and that could cause the output gap in the economy to become positive. When that happens, there's a risk of an increase in demand pull inflation. And if demand pull inflationary pressures are on the rise, that could trigger the central bank to tighten policy with higher interest rates. An appreciation of the currency, option A, would cause the price of imports to go down, uh, less inflation. C, if the country has a higher trend growth rate, they can tolerate faster growth without causing inflation, no pressure to raise interest rates. And again, with D, if there's an increase in the inflation target, the central bank will be under less pressure to use higher interest rates because they're going to tolerate a higher rate of inflation. Let's move on to question two. How is the pursuit of quantitative easing, QE, by a country's central bank likely to affect the price of bonds issued by the government and the country's foreign exchange rate? Here's your moment. Press the pause button. Have a go at the question. I'll be back in a few seconds. And the answer to question two is A, price of bonds is likely to go up. The exchange rate will appreciate. Here's the reasoning. With QE, uh, the central bank is buying government bonds. This increases the demand for bonds, causing their price to rise. Some of this extra money created through QE will then flow out of the economy, and that will increase the supply of a currency and therefore cause the exchange rate to depreciate. Question three. Which combination of changes is most likely, most likely to result in a fall in inflation? Which combination of changes is most likely to cause a fall in inflation? Have a go. Press the pause button. When you're ready, come back to me. I'll, I'll be here back with the right answer. What did you get for question three? The correct answer is... B. The correct answer is B. All three of those, in theory, will help to bring down inflation. First of all, a higher exchange rate causes the price of imports to fall and therefore less cost push inflation and it also should have a, a negative effect on export demand affecting demand pull inflation fall in indirect taxes such as vat or duty cuts costs for suppliers and they may choose to bring down their prices as well causing inflation to fall and if the money supply is growing less quickly then if you use the quantity theory there's less money floating around in circulation in theory that increases real interest rates in the, in the economy Again, that should help and dampen down demand and less risk of a rapid growth of money and credit causing inflation. Here's question four. A country has a floating exchange rate and an independent central bank. The inflation rate is currently stable and the bank's target rate at the bank's target rate of 5%. What is likely to happen to interest rates and to the exchange rate if the central bank is given a new Inflation target of only 2%. Have a go at the question. Okay, what did you get for question four? So they've cut the inflation target for the central bank. The bank now has to be tight on inflation. Likely answer is D. Interest rates like to go up and the exchange rate will appreciate. Fall in inflation target means that the central bank will probably need to tighten monetary policy because they need to bring the actual rate of inflation down from 5% to 2%. So interest rates will likely to go up. If interest rates go up, that's going to cause an inflow of hot money across the foreign exchanges and that will lead to an appreciation of the exchange rate. So the answer is D. Final question. If you've got four out of four, fantastic. Can you get five out of five? How might quantitative easing, QE, help to stimulate economic growth? Have a go. Okay, final question. How did you get on? The answer to question five is C. 
by reducing long-term interest rates. It's the main answer. Here's the reasoning. With QE, the central bank goes into the markets to buy bonds. That increases the demand for and the prices of bonds, corporate bonds, government bonds. When bond prices rise, then the yield or the interest rate on the bonds falls. And then a fall in long-term interest rates is likely, well, hopefully, to stimulate higher investment, particularly if businesses and government can borrow more cheaply. And a rise in investment ordinarily is good, particularly for long-term economic growth. There we go, five questions covering monetary policy and inflation.